Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna to be taking our interior trim panels from this to this. Now there are a few ways to get that beautiful forged carbon look. One of them obviously being to take a mold of the original piece and replicate it in carbon fiber. Another one to carbon skin it, which is basically laying a layer of carbon fiber on top of it. Those are both of course dealing with real carbon, but the most inexpensive and in my opinion, easiest and DIY friendly way, wrap it. So this vinyl is from Vinyl Frog. This is the beautiful glossy forged carbon fiber. They actually just came out with this and as soon as I saw them post about it, I knew I had to get it. So this is what we're gonna be working with today. Now the first step is optional, but I would definitely suggest doing that and that is removing the pieces entirely. This is gonna make the job 10 times easier because you're gonna be able to actually wrap all the edges around the corners rather than having to cut them and this is actually gonna extend the lifespan of your wrap. You're gonna get a much easier job in that you can maneuver the piece however you need to to get the right angles. And then on top of that, you can actually bring the job inside as opposed to doing it in the car, which is probably gonna get hot and you know, we're in Texas in the middle of summer so it is very hot right now. Aside from the wrap, we're gonna be using a heat gun, a box cutter, and an X-Acto knife, but a 30 degree knife would be better some knifeless tape, as well as some rubbing alcohol, and not pictured here, some microfiber towels. So I'm gonna be starting off with a smaller piece just to kind of get a feel for it. But if you look closely, you will notice it is relatively dirty. So, so I'm gonna be using the isopropyl alcohol to clean it up. We do also have a collection of microfiber rags. These are probably gonna be a better option because you're not gonna have to worry too much about like little fibers and everything carrying off and actually getting underneath the wrap when you're trying to lay it down. And if you do have a bigger job, you can definitely use some denatured alcohol. This stuff, you are gonna have to look for it, but it does work really well. This is specifically what Leo uses. And then on top of that, uh, you can actually just load it up into a spray bottle and you have a pretty easy way to clean larger pieces. When it comes to cleaning these pieces, you wanna make it a point to be as thorough as possible. For sure you wanna clean the surface you're gonna be wrapping, but you also wanna clean the backside as well. The beauty of removing the pieces to wrap them is you can fold the ends over to the back and create a really clean look with no visible edges or cuts. So you wanna make sure the back is clean as well so that the vinyl can stick to it easily just as it would the front. General rule of thumb, clean it as best as you can, and then go again. Now as for the vinyl, it does also come with this little tool kit. Uh, this is for like edges and little trimming pieces. And I got the option to add this for $4, which is a really good deal. So you get one of these little scalpel-like tools, this edge tool right here. And I'm not really sure what this one does, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be helpful. These two were in there as well. So again, I'm starting with this piece to get more of a feel with the vinyl, mainly because this is a smaller piece, so if I need to adjust something, it's not gonna be a super drastic difference, or if I mess up, really no biggie. Some of these other pieces are actually pretty large, specifically the door panel trim, and if you mess something up there, you're gonna have to count for it a lot more intently. But I've actually found that this vinyl is a lot more forgiving than I was expecting, so as a beginner, it is a big plus in actually going about it. Makes the job seem a lot more approachable, especially because I've always been interested in doing rap, so giving it a shot, I'm actually happy with the overall result. Now the good thing, this being a smaller piece, it's a lot easier to maneuver so I can mess with it a lot more specifically. Bad thing is I end up coming out of frame a good bit, but I will say that moving on from this, it gets a lot more centered. Thankfully, having this piece off, we know where we need to have good vinyl and we know where we can actually afford to leave some mistakes. So what we're going for here is actually just accounting for the curved edges because those are gonna be the things that are gonna be a little bit more difficult to account for because the vinyl is gonna to wanna to crease and fold up there. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting relief cuts around the edges and with those, I'm using heat to really pull them over and cinch them down. If you're a little bit more familiar with what you're doing, you probably don't need to use as much heat as I am, but if you're a beginner like me, main goal, just don't overheat the wrap because you can damage it, which again, it's pretty forgiving so that didn't really come up at all. But all we're doing for this piece right here is just doing it section by section, flattening it out and massaging it so it's nice and flush with the piece, and then turning it around to actually cinch everything down. It should be good to go. Now here is what the piece is looking like now. Again, this piece can be more complex because it has the curves and whatnot. And this is actually where you can see a little bit of the benefit of actually removing the piece entirely because we do have a little tear right there in the corner, which I am gonna put some vinyl over just to kind of deter it from actually stretching anymore. However, whenever this trim piece is installed, this piece actually goes above it and it actually covers that little section right there. So it has some clearance before you'll even see it. So that's definitely the benefit that you will basically get the most depth to it 
We are still gonna fix it, granted, but this is something that if you're doing it without actually removing the piece from the card, you have to redo it entirely. This piece, we can do an easy fix and you won't even be able to tell. And you can see just how glossy this piece is. So while I'm not a professional, all the areas that theoretically could be better, they're all gonna be on the underside of this piece or just taken out of the equation entirely. This piece we are working on next is actually connected to the last piece. This goes around the infotainment system. To start off, I'm laying a small section of vinyl at the top and then peeling the backing off of the rest so it lays down really nice and orderly. Then from there, I'm taking my finger and pressing it against the vinyl so I can get it all smooth, no air bubbles or anything. Once you actually got that, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're just gonna flip it over, you're gonna do some relief cuts, and you're actually just gonna fold it over to hold it all in place. And honestly, it's actually easier to do this one than it was the last one. The only area you're actually accounting for that's gonna require some attention is the flat section towards the bottom. We're doing that a little bit later. We're gonna start off with the top and work our way around, which honestly, it's very, very similar to the last one, but there's a lot more straight sections, so a little bit more forgiving. Here's a closer look at how I'm tackling the curved edges. So the vinyl being flat and placed around a curved edge is gonna to wanna to crease or create little folds rather than sitting flush. For this, the main thing I'm focusing on are heat and relief cuts. My goal is to have enough material to lay over thoroughly with some excess to then place my cuts. After making sure the front side is flush, I make a few cuts and then heat up the material with the heat gun. Once it's heated, I start pulling and folding it over. The little tabs formed by the relief cuts are what I'm pulling and these allow the vinyl to have small little sections that can be pulled in independent directions, leading to a flush fit against the curved edge. There might still be some creases or folds, but again, you can get that to the back of the piece. Past this, you can cut the excess whenever you're ready. It did take more time to do this bottom section, but it's more specifically because of the almost 90 degree angle for these large sections. The vinyl being pulled in that direction created some larger folds that appeared somewhat daunting at first, but realistically, all I did was massage it out in small increments, and that took care of the whole thing. After noting that this section required more attention, that's what I focused on for the other side, so that in finishing this piece, it was just a center section to do, which was a piece of cake. I kind of found that I had to stretch it a little bit, mainly because right here in the middle, you're barely having enough material to actually get all the way around. Thankfully, we were able to do so. Now the piece itself does have some imperfections, some subtle scratches and scuffs. Uh, but the good thing is that this being forged carbon, it's a relatively abstract look. So it honestly does hide a little bit of those, which I'm pretty happy about. I'm more showing you what it looks like with the light directly on it, but majority of the times you're probably just gonna see it like this, just that nice little glossy look to it. Whenever you actually look closely, you'll see the little forced carbon pattern, which is what I really like. Now for these door panel trim pieces, you'll actually notice that this intersection is actually a separate piece from the outer section. Now if you flip it around, you'll see these little plastic pieces holding it in position. These are plastic welds. So think of normal welding, now do it with plastic. That's all it is. Now there are a few ways to address this. Of course, you can just wrap around it, especially if you have the edge tool, it makes it a lot easier. You can just kind of tuck everything into the edges there, or you can do what we did with the custom Ford emblems and actually remove it to give it a nice contrast. So what we did for those, those are also plastic welded. We disassembled everything and we were able to actually get some choices in how we wanted to paint it and reassemble it. So that actually looked really cool, really unique. So that's what we're gonna be doing for this. I do have a roll of matte black, which is the color I'm leaning towards right now. I think I wanna have a contrast, have the center section be matte black and then the rest in obviously the forged carbon. I think it'll give a nice look to the door panel, so I think that's where we're gonna go. So getting this piece off of this did take some effort. Just wanna let you guys know that right off the bat. Uh, there's probably a specific tool out there for it somewhere, but I don't have it. So what I did was I started off using this tool right here. Just basically cutting at the plastic. Then you can use a drill and actually drill a hole into the tab itself to kind of push it through, give you a little bit more leverage. And then this helped to kind of grab some of the excess plastic and pull it out. Uh, but between those three, I was able to get a pretty uniform job done. But that's honestly probably the harder aspect out of the way because this we can wrap entirely on its own, which should be pretty straightforward. And then for this piece, we can actually just wrap almost this entire section. Just a little slit here. It's gonna be covered up. So it should be relatively approachable. This is all very smooth and these angles aren't very drastic. So it should help out a good bit. So I wrapped this piece off camera mainly because there's four of them. So I wanted to get my hands on one, get some perspective so I could give you guys some more tips and tricks and some more insight and just how to do it the best way, or at least the easiest in my opinion way. And the first thing that I did was added some inlays. So uh, I have one right there and one right there in the bottom. 
Now all that an inlay is, is just a piece of vinyl in an area that's gonna be a little bit harder to reach. So you can tell that in there and up there, you're gonna have a pretty aggressive angle that you're gonna need to do. Edges are not perfect, but there's a big cover piece that goes in this whole section, so not really worried about that. Inlays make it a ton easier. All it is is basically just laying some vinyl down, flattening it out, and then using some knifeless tape here along the edge to give it a nice cut. And right here, you can very faintly see the outline of the edge of the inlay. I basically wrapped over it. What I did for the bottom section for the main piece of vinyl covering this main trim piece, I actually put it to where the cut was right underneath the handle. So you're not even gonna see the lines and it looks really, really good. The other thing is I did remove the speaker mesh from these pieces and it's actually gonna clean up all of this because you can see it's just very subtly like uneven cuts because it's very difficult to get like a nice smooth cut here whenever it's a little jagged edges and little mounting points in there. But the speaker mesh is actually gonna cover it and clean it all up, so it's gonna be no biggie whatsoever. Uh, that is something I'd recommend doing, because these are actually my spare door trim pieces. The original ones are still on the door panels and the door panels are getting reupholstered. So we'll be able to swap everything back whenever we get those pieces back as well. But that's gonna clean up all of this right here. And then same with this right here. This looks a little unsightly, but of course we have the trim pieces. It's gonna cover it up and make it look really good. So we're all set there, but let's start off with the inlays. Now, whenever I say an inlay is a piece of vinyl in an area that's gonna be harder to reach, that also includes areas that are gonna be harder for the vinyl to reach without being strained. If it's strained around hard or rough angles, it does run the risk of tearing. So placing these inlays in here just makes it so you don't have to overexert the vinyl itself while also allowing you to have a more forgiving process. I'm starting by placing the vinyl and trying to get it flush with the roof of this little section. And from there, using the tool to press it in. Usually you place the knifeless tape first, but for this specific scenario, I kept unintentionally pulling it up, so I ended up doing that after, but definitely suggest doing it before. Now for this lower section, I was able to get the knifeless tape started the first time around, so I did that, and then I followed the same process. Main hurdle here is the door handle. You're gonna have to move it around to be able to lay the vinyl underneath, so take your time with this. But very similar situation, just placing it in there and getting it flush and using the provided tool to press it in place. This is where an X-Acto knife is a little bit more helpful than this box cutter that I'm using as it's thinner and allows you to make more streamlined cuts without getting your whole hand in there. For the knifeless tape, all you're doing is laying it down, creating a line of where you want it to cut. You tug one end off to get a hold of the string, and then you pull the string against the vinyl going to the other end of the tape. You don't want to lift up because that's actually probably going to lift up the vinyl at least a little bit. All you want to do is just go towards the other end of the tape. I'd also say this piece wasn't very difficult after the inlays were placed because the relative hard part was done. The only other thing to account for moving on would be cutting the center section out, so the area covered by the smaller trim piece as well as the door handle to speaker area. But just in cutting with ample space to tuck the vinyl in rather than right on the crease made it super feasible. Same concept here, laying the vinyl down and getting it flush with the main surface area and then pressing it down on the back to secure a hold. This piece took the longest to wrap, but it's more dependent on the size rather than the difficulty. Take your time with it and it should be pretty straightforward. The cuts both around the speaker mesh area and small insert area don't need to be perfect, they just need to easily cover the edges. It helps to try to get a straighter cut for the area covering the inlays, but the inlays are there to fill the gap. Another really good thing about this vinyl is the overall forged carbon look, especially glossy, makes it to where the abstract look can hide imperfections really well, which is an added peace of mind. It makes it to where you feel like you have a safety net going in, even if you don't need it. I, for one, did need it though. So here is an overall finished look of the pieces and it looks honestly really good. I'm very impressed with it, especially as a beginner. So I will say that though it is a pattern like on the vinyl itself, it doesn't look like it was copied and pasted anywhere, which is awesome because if you are worried about that, you can actually just kind of flip it around and adjust the vinyl and how you're laying it down a little bit, which is what I did. So it looks very, very uniform with each other, but the pieces themselves don't look like they're copied and pasted. And I just know that these pieces are gonna look awesome with the new look of the interior as a whole. Now we do still have a couple pieces left to wrap and reassemble, but I'm gonna be waiting for Yvette to get here because she absolutely loves vinyl wrapping and she'd be pretty mad if I didn't at least share a little bit with her. So we got that going. And then once we get the pieces back from reupholstery, we should be able to reinstall everything, which should be in the next two days. So I'm very, very excited. Make sure to stay tuned for that, because next time you see me, the interior is gonna have an entirely new color scheme. It's gonna be awesome. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next one.